Use the means of today to reach the people of today. The Church Speaks, an episode where the Holy Father, the Pope, and the Bishops of the Philippines speaks about their apostolic letters and exhortations to all Catholic Christians. Recalling the spiritual exercises of St. Ignatius of Loyola, Pope Francis said, Desolation can be defined as darkness of the soul, disturbance in it, movement to things low and earthly, the unquiet of different agitations and temptations, moving to want of confidence, without hope, without love, when one finds oneself all lazy, tepid, sad, and is separated from his Creator and Lord. He noted that all of us have experienced desolation in some way, but the problem we face is how to interpret it, because desolation has something important to tell us, and we risk losing it if we are in a hurry to free ourselves of the feeling of emptiness. He added that inasmuch as we would all like a life that is always joyful, cheerful, and fulfilled, this is not always possible and would also not be good for us, as the change from a life oriented towards vice can start from a situation of sadness or remorse to what one has done. Remorse. Explaining further, Pope Francis said that the word remorse from the etymological viewpoint means the conscience that bites, that does not permit peace. Sadness, Pope Francis stressed, on the importance of learning to read sadness, which is mostly considered negatively, but instead can be an indispensable alarm bell for life, inviting us to explore richer and more fertile landscapes. Pope Francis then pointed to the example of Jesus, who repelled temptations with an attitude of firm resolution. Trials assailed him from all sides, but Jesus was determined to do the will of the Father, and they failed to hinder his path. In spiritual life, said the Pope, trials is an important moment because when you come to serve the Lord, prepare yourselves for trials. Sirach 2, 1. Similarly, a professor only accepts that a student has passed the test after he has examined the student to see if the student knows the essentials of the subject. If we know how to traverse loneliness and desolation with openness and awareness, we can emerge strengthened in human and spiritual term. No trial is beyond our reach. Pope Francis concluded by re-echoing St. Paul's words that no one is tempted beyond his or her ability because the Lord never abandoned us, and with him close by, we can overcome every temptation. We shall continue the Pope's reflection next Sunday. Prayer for the Synod We stand before you, Holy Spirit, as we gather together in your name. With you alone to guide us, make yourself at home in our hearts. Teach us the way we must go and how we are to pursue it. We are weak and sinful. Do not let us promote disorder. Do not let ignorance lead us down the wrong path, nor partiality influence our actions. Let us find in you our unity, so that we may journey together to eternal life and not stray from the way of truth and what is right. All this we ask of you who are at work in every place and time, in the communion of the Father and the Son, forever and ever. Amen. This Holy Mass is brought to you in collaboration with Ricardo O. Santiago Sr., Steve G. Santiago and Family, Stu and Nancy Santiago and Family, Stephen and Joy Santiago and Family, Salome Santiago Lim and Benedicto Lim Jr. and family, Sunny Boy and Luella Santiago and family, Fancy May D. Imbong, Mercy Evangelista and family, St. 
John Paul II College of Davao, Royal Bread House Incorporated, Tat and Gigi Coronel and Family, Teresita Villa Abrile, Tilinaw Trucking Services, Mr. and Mrs. Putasio and Fe Takandong and Family, Davao Durian Laundry Services Company, Shardan, JDB Diversified Incorporated, Melvin E. Aviles, Willens Food House, Silvina Datoy and Family, Jess and Amelia Deason, Gus and Sophie, Mrs. Ampi Casas and Family, Adolfo and Malu Ato, Purita and Lorenzo and Family. Offering of the Holy Mass Accept Most Holy Trinity, this sacrifice fulfilled at one time by the Divine Word, and now renewed on this altar through the hands of your priest. I unite myself to the intentions of Jesus Christ, priest and victim, that I may be entirely offered for your glory and for the salvation of all people. Through Jesus Christ, with Jesus Christ, and in Jesus Christ, I intend to adore your eternal majesty, to thank your immense goodness, to satisfy your offended justice, and to beseech your mercy for the church, for my dear ones, and for myself. Amen. We pray for the intentions of our regular sponsors, choir members, donors, offers, and volunteers of this Holy Mass, especially the sponsoring group. Domingo T. Oy, Abelina Capinda and family, Jose B. Ong. Thanksgiving intentions. Nida Tomalip, Anonymous, Magdalena Kukam, Carlos Ten and family, P.O.P. Salamanca, Pablo T. Sol Cruz Jr., Salvador family, Fe de la Vega Oy, Risa Flor Oy Llamido, Russell Caballero, Norman Morales and family. Good health. Mercy Evangelista, Ernesto and Erlinda Aguilar, Nelio and Evelyn de la Peña, Lilia and Bonifacio Mabilin, Ronel Mabilin, Vivian Cam, Captain Ireneo and Betty Malano, Maria Lita Montalban. Birthday Intentions, Domingo T. Oy, Abilina Capinda, 50th Birthday, Lisa Mangadalaw, Lisa Mangadlao, Germana Coquilla. Recovery and Healing of Emil Season, Regina Cispedes, Julie Sanz, Linda Torrejos, Rudy Torrejos, Pucholo, B. Fuentes, Mary Ann Cispedes, Jaime Fonteras, Abelina Capinda. For the eternal repose of Rodolfo Sr., Bernardo, Luciana, Germin, Erlinda, Claudio, Marutas, Julio, Minandro Sr., Anastasio, Filipa, Eduardo, Ernesto Sr., Jessica Manuel Rinerio Sr. Conrada, Adelaida Leoncio Damaso Floro Fele Linda, Christine Merlin Leia, and the victims of the war in Ukraine and in all parts of the world, all the souls in purgatory, all the deceased benefactors, sponsors, and cooperators of the Pauline's Media Mission. Let us pray for our brothers and sisters who are sick. Lord, and Father, God without end and Almighty, through your grace you gave us strength and help in our weakness. In your mercy touch your sick people, deliver them from their sickness and restore their good health, so that assured of your goodness and love, they will praise and thank you in your holy name. Through Christ our Lord, Amen. Brothers and sisters, we hear in our gospel today that Jesus, while visiting Jericho, met Zacchaeus. The actions of Jesus were misunderstood then by the people, but they sent out a powerful message that he has indeed come to this world for the salvation of sinners. His plan was simple and led to spiritual healing. Today, as we celebrate Prison Awareness Sunday, we entrust to God our brothers and sisters in prison 
who are being condemned and rejected by our society. The presider of this Mass is Father Neil Badilio, OFM, Order of Friars Minor, Barangay Pampanga, Davao City. The choir during this Mass is the Canticles of Praise Choir, Carmelite Monastery, Lanang, Davao City. Let us joyfully celebrate the banquet of love. Please stand as we start the Holy Mass. Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. Good day, good people, and welcome to our celebration of the Holy Eucharist. And we are on the 31st Sunday in the Ordinary Times, and we are also celebrating today the Prison Awareness Sunday. And together with our personal and communal intentions, we also pray for our brothers and sisters who are incarcerated. We pray also for all our Christian brothers and sisters as well who are making apostolate and ministry in the prison cells. As we continue this celebration, let us acknowledge that all of us are sinners. We acknowledge as well that God is full of gentleness and compassion, and so we ask for his forgiveness. You were Give us our sins and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. 
Let us pray. Almighty and merciful God, by whose gift your faithful offer you bright and praiseworthy service, grant we pray that we may hasten without stumbling to receive the things you have promised. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Sometimes we wonder why God is so patient with sinners. This short passage from the Book of Wisdom gives us the answer which is based on the truth that God is the creator of all and loves all his creatures in seamlessly. The first reading. A reading from the Book of Wisdom. Before the Lord, the whole universe is a grain from a balance or a drop of morning dew come down upon the earth. But you have mercy on all because you can do all things and you overlook people's sins that they may repent. For you love all things that are and loot nothing that you have made. For what you hated, you would not have fashioned. And how could a thing remain unless you will it or be preserved? Had it not been called forth by you, but you spare all things because they are yours, O Lord and lover of souls. For your imperishable spirit is in all things. Therefore, you rebook offenders little by little. Warn them and remind them of the sins they have committing, that they may abandon their wickedness and believe in you, O Lord. The Word of the Lord.
In this brief text, the Apostle Paul offers a simple prayer for the faithful of the Thessalonica and reassures them about the second coming of the Lord. The Second Reading A reading from the second letter of St. Paul to the Thessalonians. Brothers and sisters, we always pray for you that our God we make you worthy of his calling and powerfully bring to fulfillment every good purpose and every effort of faith. That the name of our Lord Jesus Christ be glorified in you and you in him. In accord with the grace of our God and Lord Jesus Christ, we ask you, brothers and sisters, with regard to the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ and our assembling with him and to be shaken out of your mind suddenly or to be alarmed either by a spirit or by an oral statement or by a letter allegedly from us to the effect that the day of the Lord is at hand. The Word of the Lord The Lord be with you. And with A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Saint Luke. Glory to you, Lord. At that time, Jesus came to Jericho and intended to pass through the town. Now, a man there named Zacchaeus, who was a chief tax collector and also a wealthy man, was seeking to see who Jesus was. But he could not see him because of the crowd, for he was short in stature. 
And so he ran ahead and climbed a sycamore tree in order to see Jesus, who was about to pass that way. When he reached the place, Jesus looked up and said, Zacchaeus, come down quickly, for today I must stay at your house. And he came down quickly and received him with joy. When they all saw this, they began to grumble, saying, He has gone to stay at the house of a sinner. But Zacchaeus stood there and said to the Lord, Behold, half of my possessions, Lord, I shall give to the poor. And if I have extorted anything from anyone, I shall repay it four times over. And Jesus said to him, Today salvation has come to this house, because this man too is a descendant of Abraham. For the Son of Man has come to seek and to save what was lost. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. It has been a common teaching by our church that actually we experience God in every moment of our lives. And so I ask you today, when was the last time that you feel that God is very much present in you? You know, my brothers and sisters, we think that we can feel the presence of God in extreme, marvelous experience like miracles or extreme suffering that we long for the presence and the courage and the strength of God in us. But you know, my brothers and sisters, our gospel today is telling us that in the ordinary events of our lives, we can actually experience God. Not because that our eyes are open, but because God reaches out to us every moment of our lives, in every level of our experience. And so I would like to use this story, a very popular story of Zacchaeus, to teach us something about our human experience of God. The first one is the desire to meet God. We can see and we heard in the gospel today that Zacchaeus, in spite of his immoral life, he is a cheap tax collector, a sinner, considered to be an outcast in the religious community, decide in his, in his heart to see Jesus. But there are some obstacles, of course. There are too many crowds. And he was short of stature, perhaps not only physically, but spiritually and morally, he was very small. That's why it's very difficult for him to see Jesus. And so he climbed a tree. The desire to see Jesus gave him that creative idea how he could see and encounter Jesus. The inner experience and the desire to see God in our prayers are actually a gift from God. It has been implanted in our hearts, believers or non-believers, sinner or saint. We are actually gifted by God that desire to see him. And we just need only a spark, a desire that I want to see Jesus and that is the beginning that we will discover God's presence, not because of our own doing and on our own capacity, but because God seeks us first. And so when we seek out to him, we are actually encountered him because from the very beginning, God has been seeking us all the time. We are only blinded by the crowd and by our stature. The second one is we also experience God in his words. That's why we are reading the Gospels from the Old Testament and New Testament, the Word of God. The Bible are words of God. 
and we can encounter him also with the words. And so Zacchaeus heard God when he said, Come down, because I want to stay in your house. Have you heard Jesus in your prayers, my brothers and sisters? Have you heard Jesus while reading the gospel and the Bible? Have you heard Jesus when somebody proclaimed his words here at the pulpit every time we, are, we celebrate the Holy Eucharist? If not, then we are still small, maybe because of the noisy crowd and maybe because we are too short to be able to hear his words. Then we also experience God in the paradoxical experience, the contrasting experience of being a sinner. Zacchaeus is a sinner, but then God is so good, compassionate and merciful. So the goodness of God encounters the sinful Zacchaeus and what happened? The goodness of God dominates. We also experience God in the difficult moments of our lives. That's why we kneel down before the crucifix asking God to heal us of our problems and difficulties. We also experience God in the triumph and spiritual consolation. So both in the negative and positive experiences, we experience God. So don't think, my brothers and sisters, that problems have no purpose and our spiritual joys are just simply human joys. Actually, they are occasions for us to experience God in this contrasting and paradoxical experience. We also experience God in the many events of our lives. And so when Zacchaeus knew that God, Jesus is passing through that way, he knows that this is an important event in his life to be able to encounter God. There are many events in our lives, my brothers and sisters, the birth of a child, the birth of your apo, the death of a loved one, the celebration of birthday, many events in our lives. The Holy Eucharist is an event as well. So this is also an occasion that we experience God because God is a historical being. He is one with us, accompanying us in our journey in this valley of tears. And finally, we also experience God in our transformative experience and i think this is the penultimate experience that in words in events in problems and in joys and many experiences that we have we are called by god to be transformed to be transformed is to acknowledge that god is calling us to a relationship and this relationship will transform us from our old self to a new self. And this is what happened to Zacchaeus. From being a sinner, he experienced Jesus. And that experience led him to become a new person by becoming just to others, by undoing what he has done against his neighbors and his countrymen, and to start anew in justice and in love. Therefore, we experience God in our conversion, not because we deserve it, but because of his great love and mercy. Let us renew our faith. I believe in one God. The Father Almighty, visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten the Son of God, born of the Father and for all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten and made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things are made. For us men and for our salvation, 
He came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under a conscious man. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is the Lord and Lord of life, who has spoken to the prophets. I believe in one who will not like the Holy Spirit. I confess one who will be sent for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Let us pray to the Lord whose love for us is much greater than our sins. May he grant us the humility to recognize our shortcomings and the need for his forgiveness. We let us pray, loving Father, make us a listening, healing, and loving community. Loving Father, make us a healing and loving community. For the Holy Father, Pope Francis, the bishops, priests, and religious, may they see the growing need for the Church to constantly witness to the compassionate Christ whose mercy and forgiveness restored us back to the Father. Let us pray to the Lord. Loving Father, make us a listening, healing, and loving community. For our world leaders, May they respond with wisdom and humility to the present crisis caused by selfishness and greed as they look for solution to this problem. May they recognize and repent of their own shortcomings and neglect that have contributed to the spread of poverty, violence, and hatred in our world. Let us pray to the Lord. Loving Father, make us a listening, healing, and loving community. For all victims of crimes, may they see that it is only by forgiving their offenders that they will be totally healed of the hurts they suffered. May they be strengthened through the love of God and the concrete support of their family and community. Let us pray to the Lord. Loving Father, make us a listening, healing, and loving community. For all prisoners and crime offenders, may they recognize the wrong that they have caused to their neighbor and realize their need to be forgiven by God and the people they have hurt. Let us pray to the Lord. Loving Father, make us a listening, healing, and loving community. For all those who are involved in the prison ministry, may they be constantly renewed by God's forgiving love and be transformed into His likeness. Let us pray to the Lord. Loving Father, make us a listening, healing, and loving community. For all of us gathered in this celebration, may we see ourselves as people who are imperfect and in need of constant renewal and transformation. Let us pray to the Lord. Loving Father, make us a listening, healing, and loving community. That all those who have fallen asleep in death, trusting in God's mercy, may be accepted in heaven, especially the victims of the war in Ukraine and COVID-19, the deceased members of the sponsors, benefactors, and cooperators of the Pauline's media mission. Let us pray to the Lord. Loving Father, make us a listening, healing, and loving community. Merciful Father, we find it difficult to acknowledge our sins and failures. Cleanse our hearts and teach us to be obedient to you. We make this prayer through Christ our Lord. Amen. Lord, be God, today. 
sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Sacrifice at your hands, for the praise and glory of His name. May these sacrificial offerings, O Lord, become for you a pure oblation, and for us a holy outpouring of your mercy. Through Christ our Lord, the Lord be with you. And with you. Lift up your heart. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, for you so loved the world that in your mercy you sent us a Redeemer to live like us in all things but sin, so that you might love in us what you loved in your Son. By whose obedience we have been restored to those gifts of yours that by sinning we had lost in disobedience. And so, Lord, with all the angels and saints, we to give you thanks as in exaltation we acclaim. <laughs> holiness. Make holy therefore these gifts we pray by sending down your spirit upon them like the Jewfall so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion he took bread and giving thanks broke it and gave it to his disciples saying Take this all of you and eat of it for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The Mystery of Faith When we eat this bread and drink this song, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. 
Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world, and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, Romul, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all we pray that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles and all the saints and martyrs who have pleased you throughout the ages, we merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and we praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. We pray for the coming of God's kingdom as Jesus taught us. mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory. Jesus Christ said to the apostles, Peace, I leave you my peace, I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Now we offer each other the sign of peace. Peace be with you. Peace be with you.
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. For those who cannot receive Holy Communion, we pray the spiritual communion. Jesus, Master, you assure me, I am the life. Whoever eats my flesh and drinks my blood will have eternal life. In baptism and in the sacrament of reconciliation, you have communicated to me this life of yours. Now you nourish it by making yourself my food. Take my heart, detach it from the vain things of the world. With all my heart I love you above all things because your infinite good and eternal happiness. Let us pray. May the working of your power, O Lord, Increase in us, we pray, so that renewed by these heavenly sacraments, we may be prepared by your gift for receiving what they promise. Through Christ our Lord. Heart of Hope, Contemplating Life, Awakening Love Heart of Hope, Doni will entice your heart with these tales based on gospel virtues of compassion, hope, and love. The Heart of Hope Contemplating Life Awakening Love is available at the Poland's Media Center, Philippines, at 170 per copy. It's available at the Poland's Media Center, Bolton Street, Davao City, Philippines, at 170 per copy. The Lord is with you. Please bow your heads for God's blessing. May the blessing of God be upon you, the blessing of the Father and the Son, and may the Spirit of God, the Spirit of peace, be with you all your days. May Almighty God bless you all in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our Mass has been offered. Let us go in the peace of Christ.